Hi, this is M, and today I'm going to take a little bit to press a couple flowers, and I thought I'd turn on the camera in case there's anybody that might be interested in watching and enjoying a little bit of the pretty. So if you want to see what kind of flowers these are and how I press them, then let's get started. I have my usual tools, my little basket of flowers and leaves, and then a pair of scissors, my garden snips, a pair of tweezers, then I have the cardboard spacers, which I'll show you what I do with them. I've got my paper sandwich paper, I've got the bottom paper and the top paper, <clears throat> and people usually ask me, where do you get your paper? I've had this paper for years and years, and I use it over again if it's not ruined, and this is just kind of a brown craft type paper. It's thicker than copy paper, which is what this is, and um, and I use that, I'm liking that for the top lately because I can kind of see through it and see what's in the in the sandwich once I put the flowers on. A book to put the flower sandwiches in. Any, uh, you don't want to use glossy or anything that can't breathe. You want to use newspaper or books that have paper type pages in them, that type of thing. Just please don't use anything that's uh, um, non-absorbent. First thing I'm going to do is put down a piece of cardboard. I'm going to open my book or whatever you're going to be using and then you want to put your uh, piece of paper on there so you can start putting your flowers on. And the first thing I'm going to press is the ones that are going to uh, start wilting the fastest and I spent so long getting this camera and everything set up uh, the, the video of this, it's hopefully some of these haven't already gone kind of limp already. The ones that are going to go the fastest are these primrose. And so let me bring some primrose out because that's, that's what we're going to be focusing on right now. And these are blooming now in my area, which is the Oregon coast. I just want to show you how beautiful they are. And then the leaves for the primrose are right here. So there's a lot of different colors and kinds of primrose. Oh, excuse me, these aren't primrose. These are, um, yeah, they are primrose. <clears throat> well, if I get it wrong, please forgive me. Someone could correct me in the comments because sometimes my brain and my mouth don't always go together. Look how beautiful that is. And they press some I share, but they will, some of them hold their color fairly, you know, for a fairly reasonable amount of time. And I've got a number of colors, but these were the only ones that I could find that were doing good. I only try to pick per perfect blossoms. And these, when these press, these centers look like little starbursts. They're just, they're gorgeous. And the two main things that I do with Primrose is I will press them in profile. See, this one has a little imperfection. I don't know if you can see it right there on the leaf. So I'm going to press this one in profile because... Once you press it in profile, you won't see the imperfection anymore. So that's kind of a little tip there. So I'm going to put that on my book, ready to press in profile. The leaves are pretty basic. I just, you know, set them on. And then if I want it open-faced, I'm going to take and snip right behind here. And yes, you're going to see a hole in the middle, but if you want to press these flat, it's going to happen. And see how there's a hole in there? But, but that's okay. Those just go down flat. And then the same thing with these. I'm just going to do most of these. Well, this one's got a little imperfection on it, so I'll probably press that one in profile. So I'm just checking how perfect they are as I'm doing them. This one's pretty good. And this one's got a little imperfection, so I'll do that one in profile. This one's pretty perfect as to its blossom, so we'll go ahead and do that. Same here. And I think that's about it, except for this one. And I'll just go ahead and do this one in profile. Although it's 
got some imperfections on it, but that's okay. All right. The next thing that's going to wilt quick is going to be the violas or the pansies. Okay, so here's the larger pansy. And I usually never press them with the stems because the stems will press into these uh, tender petals and mar them. So I will cut the stem off. And you want to be careful because if you cut them too close to the to the flower, it will fall apart. So it's kind of a fine line between having them stay together but not having so much bulk that it... I think I can take a little bit more off. And I usually press them, I think to myself, well, how is this laying? Sometimes I'll press them face up, and sometimes I'll press them face down. And I'm not sure how. I'll probably press this one face down. Same thing for these. And then this. There's more out there, but I just I just tried to only bring in just a little small assortment so that I don't bore anybody. Then I'll go back out again after I turn this video off and get more. Okay. Let's see what else we have in our little pile of goodies today. <laughs> Uh, the next, oh, this is um, forget me not. I had some more. These look, <clears throat> these you want to try to press quickly too because they will start to wilt. Here's kind of how it grows on the bush. See the little pieces coming out, and then they they spike from there, and. Sometimes, I'm going to get a fresh sheet of paper. I'll close the book on this in a minute. I'll set this aside. I'll talk about that in a second, but let's put this on paper. This one, I'm probably going to go ahead and press the whole thing. I'm going to take a little bit of the bulk off, just because I think that'll be interesting. I'm going to press it laying this way to where the book closes that way, I think. Or do I want to do it this way? You can try it both ways. Sometimes I like different techniques. Eh, maybe I'll do it this way. Just make it simple. This one, however, I'm going to take that spent blossom off, make it a little smaller. This one, however, I am going to press with the book closing that way to try to maintain as much of the openness as possible. So I'll set that on the book this way. Same here, put them back and set it this way. Okay, so that's kind of how that'll go. And then this is, I call it fern leaf bleeding heart. It grows up in the, well, maybe in your area it grows somewhere different, but in, in this area it grows up in the woods in kind of shady areas and I used to live in the Suisla National Forest for a while and I had some property there and so when I came back here I brought a little clump and now it's formed a bigger clump and that's the only reason I have it in my garden in my garden now sometimes I'll just press these this is too long sometimes I'll press these I'm going to press them so that they kind of fan out that way in the whole stem. And then sometimes I'll press smaller bits. That piece of debris off there. I'll press them in smaller bits. And even Still, I'll sometimes take them and take do them individually, like if I think I want to do a a mini arrangement or make some jewelry or something. I'm gonna I'm gonna want some nicely pressed individual pieces. So you can decide how you think you might 
want to use them. And then press them accordingly. These are still a little damp. It's supposed to rain tonight, so hopefully that's why I thought I better get myself in gear. And then these flowers, or excuse me, the leaves, I'll just uh, press them this way. I think there was another leaf, wasn't there? I thought I had two. Oh, <laughs> yes I do. Or you can press them in profile. This one is already starting to wilt so fast because of all of my messing around that I'm just going to go ahead and do this one in a profile. So that's how we'll do that one. Let's see what else. We've got this is a pulsatilla and it can be done profile except it's got a thick center in it so what I do is you see how it's got that thick center in it and if it's pressed in profile it isn't gonna you're not gonna see it anyway there's a little imperfection here, so I'm going to press this one on profile, but I need to get some of that center out. Unfortunately, I don't have any long fingernails. I wish I did, because that's the best way to, to pinch them out. I've got a little bit of a nail on this one, and that's why I can never have good nails, because I'm always doing something with them in gardening or, I don't know, art stuff. <laughs> Life. <laughs> so, you'll never see my hands looking good. So I'm just going to set those like that. These actually look best in profile. Um, I'm going to get a brush. See the pollen that's kind of come down in there? Let me run grab a brush. And then I'm not editing this video. It's this what happens happens and then and then I'll I put it on inactive rather than public that cuz I like to preview it first. So if you're seeing this it, it passed this <laughs> the acceptableness of of being live. Uh, I'll probably, this one's looking pretty good. Maybe we'll try it open-faced. Let me pinch out some of the center. Let's see if we can keep some of those pollen things, which we did. And if I go off camera, sorry, I'm so busy looking at these flowers, I'm not paying attention to what you're seeing in the camera. Uh, okay, so for that I'm going to snip it right close to the back. I'm going to press it down with my thumb on my finger and kind of open it up, and I'll put it face down on the paper. And see, you have a chance of having them stay nice if they're still springy and they're not wilty, because it'll spring out and, and stay nice. Once they get wilty, they'll bunch up when you try to push them down. So the pressure you can get them for pressing, the better off you'll be. And same here, this needs to be in, in profile, just because it's the bud's going to be, it's not open enough to where it's going to want to lay flat for pressing open-faced. All right, that's, what else do we have here? Oh, another, another, another primrose. See, this is getting, getting very wilty now. Let's see if we can... Put it face down. Better get those clothes in the book. All right, everything else can wait a little bit, so let's close the, the more sensitive ones up in the book. So we had the forget-me-not and the bleeding heart. Let's go ahead and this in here and we'll put this with our primrose so for closing the book I like to ha have a book that's the size of my paper so if you have a, uh, a telephone book or a book that's smaller than 
than this regular eight and a half by 11 size, then um, you, know, you can always cut your paper down to fit. I used to cut newspaper. Uh, that's what I've used for a long time until I found this paper, although I, I can't find it anymore. I bought it years, years ago from a paper place. Okay, so I, so I put that there. I put this in the spine. And then I roll. If you've watched any of my other videos, you talk, talk, hear me talking about rolling because I can kind of control to a, a small extent how they might look when they come out as far as how I want them profile and stuff. Since I want these flowers to be laying down as flat as possible, I'll roll that on there to kind of help them lay flat. And then I'm just kind of assisting them along as I'm rolling the book. And I'm, I'm uh, as you can see, teasing the shape a little bit. And then that, that's it. You get, get what you get. So that's the paper sandwich. And then I put, actually I use smooth chipboard. I put a piece of smooth chipboard on and then cardboard. And the reason I use the chipboard is a lot of this cardboard has these ridges. And the ridges, if your paper sandwich is close enough to the, the top of the book or if you have a thin book, it will, it, these ridges can imprint in your flowers. And so this is nice and smooth, alleviates that. Then I grab another book. So we start building another layer. And then we have the Here, see this is, the primrose is starting to get uh, wilty now. It doesn't want to lay down as well. And then I have these tweezers to kind of lay things down a little bit. This one is really wilty. It might be too wilty. So let's get the book closed on this, see if we can salvage these since I was talking for too long. Put this in the spine, roll it down, and see how this is wanting to bunch up right here as I'm closing the book because it's getting too wilty. You can you can you can pull it out. I'm just kind of looking at how things are laying. If I wasn't doing this on camera, I I wouldn't be closing this book until I had the page filled up. But I got I have a lot of you know space here right now that other things could go on there. But I want to get this covered up before these are too far gone for... Let's move this down a little bit. Okay, and then now we put on our chipboard, cardboard, and chipboard. I I sandwiched the, the cardboard in another book. And the base paper. For this one we had the leaves, which one was going to go this way, and then this was going to go this way. And there's, these also like to be pressed quick. This is Yarrow. And I like to press it this way so that these little individual leaves open up as much as possible. And they're wonderful for many arrangements. So I'm going to put it this way so when the book closes it, it opens it up. Leaves are usually easier to press just... <laughs> Once you decide which way you prefer to press them, although you want to try different, different experiments. Okay. And there's another one. I hope I'm not talking too low. I know I've had people comment that I talked so low. Hopefully you have a computer or a TV that enables you to pick it up. I'm sorry if, if I'm not talking loud enough. I 
try to think about it and then I forget. This is fennel. I love fennel. Same thing. I'm going to try to press it so it opens opens them up. I love both of these for their leafy text or their uh, lacy texture. These are probably well I have a lot of favorite leaves but these are right up at the top. And fennel comes back every year in my area. I just bought it from a four ounce container years and years ago. And you can cook with it. And I put it in herbal tea. And uh, this was a bronze fennel, although it looks green now. So it's got a very licorice. It smells like lic uh, licorice. Black licorice. Let's see. <laughs> chipboard, cardboard, chipboard. Another book. And I think I'm, uh, we're getting close to done to showing you what all I uh, was going to film today. A piece of paper. So here's more fennel, but I've pretty much already showed you that, so I'll do the rest off camera for the sake of time, but basically it'll, I'll just be laying it like that. And fennel, the, the more that it grows, the bigger it gets, it starts to fan out. When it's first starting to appear it's more tightly knit and I like both ways these really tightly knit ones I actually press the opposite way I go this way because I want the tightly knit I don't want to go against it because it's not fanned out enough so I want the tightly knit so uh, so I will put it that way and then this one's I'm gonna put this way because I think I'm gonna like the way that's fanned out Oh, I'll go ahead and position these on here. Same thing, I'm going to do it that way. This one, maybe I'll do it this way. And then I will do that one later. Close the book. I hope everybody's doing okay. This is uh, trying times for us all. I know we're going to make it through, hopefully, and, and those that, that don't, my heart goes out. I know uh, how difficult it must be. Especially, I, I used to, when I was younger, live in apartments and stuff where I think in this situation I probably wouldn't be able to go out. I'm, I'm of the age that my husband and I are both of the age that, you know, that it, you know, we have to be super careful. So I just wanted to let everybody know that I'm thinking of you and I'm wishing you all the best. And please take care of yourself and your loved ones. Okay. This one's done. I'm hoping that maybe if you can't get out that, that you're enjoying a few minutes of living vicariously through me because I am fortunate right now to have a, a yard that I can practice, you know, safe distancing because there's nobody else there except for my husband. And so it's nothing like looking at beautiful flowers and leaves. I even like to go on YouTube myself and look for videos about plants and just to look at the beauty, look at the prettiness and kind of escape for a little while into a different world. So here's another potent tea. We've already talked about that. But what we haven't talked about is this is azalea. There's a lot of different kinds, but this is the one that's blooming now that I like to press. And these come, these they look, they grow like that. Here's some leaves. And these are pretty much a profile plant. Just 
I'll go ahead and leave these on, but I'm looking to see if there's any leaf, uh, if all the leaves are perfect, because I'm a perfectionist, unfortunately. Okay, and then I'll press some of the leaves individually. Because this is pretty thick, and so I, I won't, I'm not going to print. These aren't too thick. And again, you may be different. If you're doing mixed media where you want thickness because you want a lot of texture, then, then press the bulk because this is this is really nice if you're doing mixed media and you want to have, uh, you know, gesso over it or something like that and, and have that texture. And I do will press things like this for uh, for that purpose, but this video is about flower pressing for not that purpose, more for cards, bookmarks, drawing tags, things like that. At least that's what I have in mind when I use them. Pictures under glass to hang on the wall. This is uh, a bud from one of the primrose we already pressed. So I basically have two things left to talk about. Excuse my arm for reaching. This is Euphorbia. And this is Epi Medium. I asked in one of my videos, I think it was last year, I showed these. And I was, what are these? And, and the, a, view, a viewer, thank you, viewer, um, said I believe that it was an Epi Medium. These leaves are just really cool. They hold their, they hold their color for a really long time. And then this... Oh, I think, did I already say this was uh, Euphorbia? Yes, I did. These are really weird when they're pressed, and I thought I would go, I tried a couple one year, and uh, it's been a while, so I thought, oh, maybe I'll try them again this year, because they're looking really good. These are, this is off the same plant, at, and this, they kind of grow in these big plumes. And they're very sappy, they're very milky, see the, See all the, that's kind of a milky sap that's coming out of them. So this, they're probably going to want to stick to the paper on the stem part that, that comes out. But I think what I'm going to do is press them this way. The, uh, these are too tight to really press open, so they're kind of probably, I'll probably initially press them in profile. But this can be open, so if I can figure out how to get them to press like that. See? Get down like that. Okay, the stem wants to go that way, but I'm pressing it to go go the way that it doesn't want to go. So I'm kind of coax it along a little bit. Let's try a couple of these lighter ones. Same thing. I won't press this whole piece like that because it's the stem's really thick and sappy. It'd probably take forever to dry. And I'm I personally anyway, you might have different ideas if you were pressing something like this, is I, I want them the individual the individual ones. Okay, so you get the idea about that, and then these, I like to press them, they'll get different sizes, right now they're all small, like this, but they can get pretty, pretty big, uh, and then as they mature, as they mature, they can also lose a lot of this kind of reddish color, reddish brownish color, and then the green might not be as intense, so they will shift their color over time. But these, if I want to press it in a cluster and I want them flat because they kind of hang down. When you're, when you're looking at them growing, see how limp this is? I waited way too long for pressing them. But, but see, they, they, grow, they grow down like that. So I'm going to <laughs> that. 
And these I'm going to do separate because I really like them individually too. And in that case, I'm just going to cut the stem off the back. And put them there individually. I don't know where my... Hmm. I just don't know where the... Out here, I was looking for the tweezers. I'm going to take the center out of this. And I'm going to press it in profile. Just fill up the book before we're done. Alright. So we're getting close to being done now. That's all I brought in for, for this time. What I'm thinking I'm going to do, because of being live and not being edited. The next question I know, I, that, or not that I know, but the next question I often get is, well, what do they look like after they're pressed? And I have a playlist called Peeking at Flowers. And so that's a good place to see what they look like after they're pressed. But I was also thinking that maybe I can do a video when I, after these get pressed and just show you these pages. So if you watch this video, then you can go look at the other video and you can see, and that might be nice. So we'll see if that that happens. Okay, so for this I'm going to just press, and remember I want to get these to lay flat. So I'm going to kind of make sure that they do. This one is not cooperating yet, so I'm going to kind of... This is where I need my tweezers. I'm going to hold this down flat like that, and then I'm going to roll the book. And then this, roll the book. And then try to hold these down flat. Scooch the tweezers out. <laughs> okay, so that's that. And then we'll put another piece of chipboard. I have a little shelf back back there, that way where I have a stack of cardboard and a stack of chipboard and then a little stack of the sandwich papers. So they're within easy, easy reach. See, this one really shows a lot of those ridges. Okay, so that's it. And then that's basically what it looks like. And the reason for the cardboard is so that uh, there's some air circulation between the books. And so I'm going to leave them sit for a day or two, and then I'm going to take the paper sandwich out and put them in fresh dry books. And then, uh, and then in a few more days, I'll do that again. And then depending upon how dry they are, uh, that may be the last rotation. And then... Perhaps, hopefully, I can see you back here again after these dry, and we can take a look at what the pages look like after they're pressed. So thank you for tuning in, and I really appreciate it. Stay safe, and have a wonderful day.